passage is short. In fact, only one half of one verse. So I don't want you to miss it. A new command I give you. Love one another. In Flanders fields, the poppies blow between the crosses, row on row. These are the opening words of a poem written by Canadian doctor and soldier John McCrae. Fifteen lines scrawled onto a scrap of paper that would soon become symbolic of the suffering and the loss of the First World War and later of all wars that followed. Poppies blow between the crosses, row on row. Thousands of crosses marking the graves of allied Christian soldiers. And in another cemetery, in another field, not so far away, Thousands more marking the graves of German Christian soldiers, as much loved by their families and by God as our own. Soldiers killing soldiers. Christians killing Christians. Row upon row of crosses that mark them all as followers of Jesus Christ. Ironic, isn't it? For Jesus said to his disciples and to Christians of every time and place, a new command I give you, love one another. Still we ignore him. We ignore his command to love our enemies choosing instead to solve our differences through violence. We claim that the war we wage is justified, and off we go. We let hawkish politicians, religious fanatics, self-serving multinationals, generals and lobbyists send our young people into harm's way to protect what they claim is our national interest. Whose interests exactly are we protecting? Jesus, on the other hand, we dismiss entirely. Loving our enemies talking out our differences, looking for the root causes of conflict, like poverty and lack of education. And then we don't act on them. They just never seem to be options, do they? And so, poppies blow between the crosses row on row. Three words are all Jesus said. Love one another. A simple command that humanity has never been able to follow in any meaningful way for any meaningful length of time. Because here we are on this Sunday after Remembrance Day, remembering the dead and recalling the horrific cost of war. In remembering the dead today, we do so in gratitude for all the sacrifices they made. And yet in many ways we should also remember them with great sorrow. For the justice for which they fought, has not been won. The peace for which they died has only been held loosely. 
sadly, the wars that broke millions of hearts have only been replaced by other wars that continue to break millions more hearts. The peace for which these men and women sacrifice so much has not prevailed. The First World War, the Great War, the war that was to end all wars, bloody battles fought in trenches, leaving an estimated 10 million dead. And Jesus said, love one another. The Second World War, fought some 21 years later. Apparently the war that was to end all wars did not end them. An estimated 55 million people were killed in World War II, including a high proportion of civilians. Among them, at least six million Jews and other persecuted minorities. And Jesus said, love one another. The Korean War, the Vietnam War, wars in Bosnia and Kosovo, Rwanda and Darfur, in Afghanistan, Canada alone suffered and lost 158 military personnel, a journalist, two aid workers, and a career diplomat. And Jesus said, love one another. Tension, instability, still rages in greater Israel, the West Bank, the Gaza Strip. The violence may be out of sight for the time being, but until it is resolved, never should it be out of mind. Our eyes and our sensibilities are now drawn to the violence that consumes Syria and Iraq. Breaking news, the war on terror rages on. It has not ceased. In fact, it's escalating as I speak. And still, Jesus says, love one another. Weapons of mass destruction. George W. Bush, Dick Cheney, Saddam Hussein, Osama bin Laden, all the characters and props in a violent drama. ISIS and the US-led coalition of foreign forces. Battles for Fallujah, Abu Ghraib, Ramadi, and Mosul. Devastating airstrikes over Aleppo and other cities in Syria. Blocked convoys trying to deliver humanitarian aid Russian interference, the Assad dictatorship. We wonder at the right and the wrong of it all. And Jesus said, love one another. Still, in Flanders fields, the poppies blow between the crosses row on row that mark our place. And in the sky, the larks, still bravely singing, fly. Scarce heard amid the guns below. And the language we use these days when talking of war belies the, the brutal and the horrific realities. We talk about the war on terror, as if war somehow were good and terror bad. We talk about the loss of civilian life as collateral damage, as though people were just unimportant collections of blood 
and skin and bone. We use the word peacemaker to describe an airborne missile when it used to mean a person, a group, or a nation that brings about peace. We use the acronym WMD, which stands for Weapons of Mass Destruction. Failing to recognize that the most frightening WMD in the world is oftentimes the human spirit. That's the true WMD. War still rages. We live in a world still where ignorance and bigotry and borders and walls along borders and ideology and prejudice and greed and protectionism and nationalism have a standing not with one another, but against one another. Jew against Palestinian, black against white, liberal against conservative, Muslim against Christian, Christian against Muslim, heterosexual against homosexual, abortionist against anti-abortionist, capitalist against communist, capitalist against socialist, white collar against blue collar, college educated against non-college educated, men against women, women against men, Trump against Clinton, Democrat against the Republican, the haves against the have-nots, the right against the left, the right against the wrong. And the list, unending, goes on and on and on. And Jesus said, love one another. I'll put this out to you. If the amount of money invested in the military and the amount of money invested in war were to be invested instead in efforts to feed the hungry, shelter the homeless, lift up the poor, educate the ignorant, heal the sick and help the helpless, then many of the root causes, I believe, of conflict would be addressed. And Jesus said, still, in Flanders' fields, the poppies blow between the crosses, row on row, that mark our place, and in the sky, the larks, still bravely singing, fly, scarce heard amid the guns below. We are the dead. Short days ago we lived, felt dawn, saw sunset glow, loved and were loved, and now we lie in Flanders fields. And there they lie. There they lie, wishing if they could that those who had sent them and those who had caused the wars that ended their lives, and that those who had caused wars long after they were gone, had simply followed Jesus' command to love one another. 